Hey there, welcome to episode 99 of the Social Business Engine podcast, a podcast where I invite thought leaders from all industries to share their expertise on social and digital communications best practices. I'm Bernie Borges from Find and Convert and your host of the Social Business Engine podcast. On today's episode, you are going to meet Ken Schneider. Ken is the head of social media at U-Haul, the industry leader in do-it-yourself moving and self-storage. Ken is going to share how U-Haul has evolved from no social media activity as recently as four years ago to engaging with customers to drive brand loyalty and conversions today through social Now, this episode is in cooperation with Visually, a leader in visual content development, just as their name clearly says. We have published Social Business Journal Volume 7 with Visually, titled Winning Through Niche Content Marketing. This journal features five brands who are winning by being very niched in their approach to reaching and engaging their customers through their content. This journal is available at our show notes page for this episode, as well as at our journals page, and you can find both at our website, socialbusinessengine.com. And now let's get to my interview with Ken Schneider, head of social media at U-Haul. Ken, welcome to the Social Business Engine podcast. Thanks for having me on, Bernie. Outstanding. Well, Ken, as you know, the way that we got together is when uh, our mutual friend, Brianna Jacobs, who is uh, the producer of the Social Media Strategies Summit, when she arranged for me to speak at their event in Vegas, I saw that you were also speaking at the event, and I wanted to learn more about how U-Haul is a social business. So, Ken, let's start with the backstory. When and how... Did U-Haul make the decision to become active on social? So, Bernie, we're you know we're a seventy-year-old brand. We started in 1945. Our founder, L.S. Schoen, was a um, Navy veteran coming out of World War II. Uh, had a um, a need basically to have a, a one-way trailer from L.A. to Portland, and that's kind of how our business started. And so, with social, it's very much the same way. Where you know we found a need with our our customers out there asking us questions, you know, mentioning us, talking about their moving experience. So a little over four years ago, uh, we really weren't on social media. We, we obviously had the, cha- you know, we, we had the profiles and, and that sort of thing, but we really weren't active and engaged um, on, the, on, the, on the channels. And so we, uh, my predecessor really kind of started social media here and, and grew it to what it is today, where we have dozens of thousands of messages coming in uh, every month, uh, especially during our busy season where it reaches over uh, 20,000 inbound, inbound messages that we have to respond to, tag, and uh, respond to with, you know, whatever the question that they may be asking. So... In part of that backstory, by the way, Ken, I didn't know the, the, the origin of the company. That's a really cool story. I uh, appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Because I'm sure a lot of my listeners didn't know that. And it's always cool to, to learn, you know, the origin of a 70-year-old brand, right? So um, I want to go back to what that looked like about four years ago when you discovered or the brand discovered that, as you said, People were on social and they were either asking questions or talking. Was it, and I don't mean to be flippant here, but I mean, was it like one day all of a sudden somebody realized, holy cow, we've got people tweeting us or, or you know, talking to us on social and nobody's listening here. I mean, was it a, like an overnight, you know, awareness thing or did, how did that happen? You know, elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, so... It- I, I do kind of think yes, it is a little bit of an overnight, you know, realization of that. Um, but it, but it's it was natural, it was organic. I mean, we had people um, monitoring and you know, po- um, not posting things on the channels, but um, we have uh, like our local pages, and so we had the profiles, but nobody was really looking at you know are our customers talking to us? Are they asking these questions? So it was kind of like this overnight thing, like okay, we need to do something about this. And, um, you know, we had to kind of 
regroup and bring some tools in that allowed us to manage all of those mentions and those questions that were coming in. And was there any kind of resistance to it at the management level? I think... No, uh, there was not, uh, mainly because you can easily see when you're talking several thousand uh, questions in a month, uh, management's pretty easy uh, to, to put some resources behind it and make so, sure our customers are taken care of. So maybe it was the opposite. Maybe management was saying, hey, we really need to get our, you know, our arms around this? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So then talk a little bit about your approach. You know, you've got this audience – of do-it-yourself movers and so what, what's your voice been like in reaching and engaging your audience so we have we try and create content or our posts are always trying to help our customers uh, we do a lot of helpful tips and you know moving hacks things like that so how we kind of manage that we have essentially three different teams broken down. Uh, we have our social cares team, which handles all of our inbound messages from the, the questions and complaints, uh, jokes, all of those things that are coming in. They kind of tag them and, and dis distribute them appropriately. Um, and then we have a community management team uh, that manages for our listening, so making sure that if they're the non-brand men, uh, non-brand mentions, um, we're at, you know we're starting a conversation with those people. The proactive marketing, basically, okay. um, and also they handle our high-profile mentions. If we have celebrities or anything like that, um, they kind of manage all of that stuff. And then we have our marketing stuff that we push out through our brand pages. The marketing stuff is the 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 third team, leg, Correct. third leg yep. of the stool. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so we have a we have a team of people that creates the content, creates the posts, um, making sure that um, we're answering the questions that are coming in from the social cares team with the appropriate either post or uh, blog post or whatever uh, content that needs to be put out. Okay, since you've been at this for roughly four years, um, is it safe to say that there's been a learning curve for you know you and the team, right? Um, First of all, would you agree with that? And, and, and secondly, and if you don't, then just, you know, by all means say so. But if you do, if there has been a learning curve, can you talk a little bit about what it is that you've been learning on this journey? Yeah, I think, I think with everything, there is definitely a learning curve. And, and for us, a lot of it has been, you know, what resonates with our customers in terms of, you know, is it the right content that we're putting out there? Is it the right voice and tone? Is it, you know, are they, um, are we, are we answering their question the best way possible? And I feel like that's been probably the biggest learning curve for us. Um, I feel like we've getting pretty good at it now, but yeah, early on it was much harder to say, is this the right content for the questions that we're getting asked? Okay. How did you learn how to deal with complaints? I know you mentioned that you've got one element, one part of the team that, that handles that, but what was the learning curve on handling complaints? So for our social cares team, the, the hardest thing for them, besides having thick skin, uh, we have to, <laughs> um, yeah, we, we have to make sure that we, our SLAs don't go down. So the, the, that's the hard part about a complaint. Um, because we have so many locations across the country, uh, we have to, reach out to that location, find out, you know, both, basically both sides of the story, uh, get that, put it into the system, and then kind of get a resolution resolved um, all within a certain amount of time. Uh, and to do that effectively has been a challenge. I mean, we still work on that today. Um, and I think that's probably the hardest thing for us to, to kind of tackle, if you will. Right, right. You've got stores out on the field, Ken. So can you maybe comment on how what's their involvement do they get involved in responding to complaints do they get involved in any kind of proactive activity i mean what is their role in your social strategy so for us everything is handled uh here at our headquarters uh what we do is we just communicate to the field, uh, the, to the store specifically, what the issue may have been. Uh, we get a resolution from that store, and we communicate that to the customer directly from from the, the social media channel. Okay, all right. So, okay, so you so you've got a direct link out to the store so that they know uh, what occurred and what the resolution was. 
Correct. Okay. Ken, has there been any level of experimentation in your social strategy at U-Haul? Yes, for sure. Uh, I, I like to tell tell my team that uh, we should be experimenting every day um, on all our channels. Uh, I'm 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 always I'm constantly looking for how we can push the boundaries of like what kind of content we're publishing or what type of post we're doing, uh, what new channel we want to be looking at. Uh, so so I think yes, we do. Um, it seems like every other week we have some kind of new feature on Instagram or uh, a new channel like Snapchat or uh, you know video with the boomerangs and and that sort of thing. So yes, we post it. Uh, we look at the metrics, we look at the numbers, and then we see does it work. If it does, then let's add it to the the kind of the mix of our uh, content. Or if it doesn't, then let's test again, try something different, uh, look at the numbers, and then see if we want to add it to, to the arsenal of ideas that we have uh, for our content. Okay. Well, you've, you've teed up my next question, Ken, beautifully. Uh, I'd love to talk about, uh, you know, what, what have you been experimenting with and what, what's been working? A great example uh, would be just shortly last year, about mid-last year, we started a campaign on Snapchat which is a interesting channel to say the least, mm -hmm. especially for a 70 year old brand. Um, and what we did and what we, what we tried to accomplish was um, obviously to reach the younger demographic, mm -hmm. uh, talk to college students. Uh, we have a really cool program here at U-Haul called College Boxes. And what it essentially is, is I'm a college student, I call up, we ship you boxes, uh, you put your stuff in the boxes, you call us back, we pick up those boxes, we store those boxes uh, until next semester when you need them uh, you know, for, for the next semester. So we, were, we did a whole kind of series uh, on um, Snapchat, these stories, and we kind of told that story of, hey, I'm moving out of college or I'm, you know, I need to put my stuff there. So we did these stories. We also did um, packing tips. We did uh, like college easy meals. We did call just everyday college hacks, things like that. Um, and so that was a really cool campaign. Uh, and to be honest, without the interns here that we have in the social media team, I, I'm not really sure it would have been nearly as good or as successful as it was. But that was like kind of one of the, the big last experiments that we did. Um, and that was pretty successful for us. So did I hear you say that you had some interns that were actually helping you with that and that maybe, yes. so I'm reading into that, that those interns were of the same sort of demographic maybe? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. And, and that was a factor, huh? I think so. Um, you know, with the certain social platforms that are newer and I think sometimes, you know, the older you get, the, the harder or maybe less understanding you are of certain things and just maybe a little nuance. Hey, let, let, let's not go there, Ken. No, I'm sorry. Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. I was just going to say that, that, you know, with, with the younger demographic and the people that are on uh, like a channel like Snapchat, they know the little nuances of what that platform is and uh, how to do things and like I learned that they're only on there a certain time frame. You know, the the stories are only on there for 24 hours. And right. So those are just the little things that you could read up on it. But having somebody that uses it on a day to day has been was really uh, helpful for us. Right. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. So Ken, you're roughly four years into the social strategy at U-Haul. U-Haul is you know the leader in do-it-yourself moving and storage. And uh, I'd like to know, how's it going in terms of the impact on the business? What can you share in terms of how your social business strategy is impacting the business? Yeah, I think, I think overall, um, we've gained uh, so much value to the business in itself. I mean, speaking purely from not only just the customer care side of it, of we manage, you know, dozens of thousands of, of complaints and we take that away from a call center um, and, and we manage it separately and that's where our customers are. Besides that, um, we, we kind of fill the content gap from what our website offers and to what our customers need. So we are 
looking at what our customers are talking about, what they're asking, uh, and formulating our content calendar and editorial around what people need. And so then we create blogs or we'll create posts or videos based on that feedback we're getting from our customers. And that has easily increased traffic, revenue, all of those things across the board. Awesome. Well, that's what we want to hear, right? Yep. On the Social Business Engine podcast, that uh, your social strategy is having a positive impact on the business. So my last question before I get to my last question, how's that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, you know, this is still fairly early 2016. So what do you anticipate this year? Is it kind of more of the same or do you have any kind of big plans that you're able to talk about? Uh, just what's going on for 2016? Bernie, if I knew that, uh, I would. Uh, <laughs> that would be great. No, um, 2016, I think, is going to be a really important year for us, mainly because we've seen a lot of growth, um, and I think we're getting to a more mature stage in the in the social media world. Uh, we have a good presence across our channels, so I feel like this is going to be a really big year for us. Uh, I think there's a couple channels that I'm really interested in. Um, my main one is Pinterest. I think that's going to be huge for us. Uh, we already are pretty big on there, but I think we can take it to the next level as well as YouTube. Uh, our video strategy is uh, kind of going to take the next level for us uh, across the board with all the videos that we can we can accomplish and really tackle uh, the, the questions and, and kind of our customers' pain points uh, that they have. So I think those are the couple big things that we're looking forward to. Okay. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about live streaming with platforms like Periscope and its explosive popularity. Is that an area that you're experimenting in? We did actually do a couple experiments with Periscope um, on some of our live events. We had a, um, a partnership that we did a, a local uh, whole party type thing. And, and so we, we did do a little bit of that and we had some really good engagement there. Um, I think I struggle from the way our brand is to find value in the live streaming aspect. Um, so I'm not sure if we're going to really dive a whole lot more into that at, at this point. Okay. All right, cool. Well, you know, I'm really glad to hear that actually, because just because it's a shiny new object and it's really popular, you know, if you determine that it's not having, it's not relevant and not a good impact on the business, then that's the, the best reason not to uh, spend time on it. So that's awesome. Exactly. All right, so Ken, we are at the point in the podcast where I will review my summary of the conversation, and then I'm going to ask you at the end of my summary to elaborate, clarify, fill in any holes, or just otherwise uh, correct anything that I may have misstated in my summary. Ready? Yep. All right. So we began this conversation with you describing a little bit of the origin of U-Haul, a 70-year-old brand. And how you realized about four years ago that customers were already talking to you on social media, but the brand didn't have a presence, an active and organized presence. No one was really closely monitoring or responding to uh, activity on social media. So uh, a team was assembled and you began to really focus on it. And you talked about how you started to create content that was really focused on being helpful to your audience. And um, you've assembled three teams that handle your social strategy. You said that one of them is the social care team where they're handling questions and complaints. Another one is the community management team where they're managing the community around non-brand activities and also high profile uh, activities. And then the third one is the, the marketing team where they're creating the content, they're creating the posts, they're, you know, they're uh, ensuring that the questions get answered with the right content that addresses those questions. We talked a little bit about the learning curve, Ken, and you acknowledged that, you know, it was a learning curve, especially in the beginning, and that uh, you really focused on what resonates with your audience and really focused on answering their questions. And uh, we talked a little bit about um, how complaints are handled, and you mentioned that the, the main thing about complaints is to ensure that your SLAs don't go down. And uh, when I asked about the role of the local store, you clarified that everything from a social communication or an engagement standpoint is handled through headquarters where you are, but then you communicate out to the local store uh, any engagement that impacts them at the local level. 
We talked a little, little bit about experimentation. I love the fact that you said you tell your team to experiment every day. You experiment with things like content and channels. And, you know, we talked a little bit about Periscope. You said you experimented with it and determined that it just really wasn't a, a channel that really moves the needle for, for the brand. So it's not something that you're really focused on. Uh, and then one of the things that you did uh, share a story on from an experimentation standpoint, what I think is a really cool story, was that last year in 2015 that you did a campaign on Snapchat that was targeted to college students. And you talked about a box program that helps them, you know, box and move. And you gave them hacking tips. And, and then you, you mentioned that you had interns help you with that and that those interns, probably because of their demographics, their their age, uh, really knew the nuances and really uh, helped that campaign be successful. And then uh, as we kind of wrapped up the conversation, we talked about the impact on the business. And you mentioned a couple things that really resonate for me, Ken. One is that you're improving customer care. You're deflecting uh, traditional calls coming into the call center. And you're also filling the content gap from the website by knowing how to respond to customers and producing the content that uh, customers are asking questions about. And then you said that for this year, for 2016, you feel like, you know, you're getting more mature in your use of social. So you really expect to um, just kind of, you know, keep going and getting better, bigger and better results. But you also said that you expect to see more activity on Pinterest, more video content, and you expect both of those to have a significant impact on the, the business results from your social strategy. So, Ken, that's my summary. I'd like to ask you now if there's anything that you'd like to either elaborate on or clarify. Yeah, I think um, the the one thing about 2016, I feel, um, is that we're we're going to continue to experiment. Um, if something comes up, a new platform, channel, content type, we're going to experiment and test and and see if it if it fits. Okay, cool, awesome. So. Ken, we are at the point now where I ask you my one thing question, and that is, what is the one thing that you would like to leave my listeners with from our conversation today that might be an actionable takeaway for them? So for me, I, I think I always like to ask myself, does this help the customer? Does this provide value to our customers? Uh, and if the answer is yes, then, then we move forward with it. We publish it. Um, but if it doesn't, then we move on. And that would be something that I would advise uh, your listeners, uh, you know, as, as to ask themselves when they're, when they're providing content or um, looking at their editorial. So always focus on providing value to the customer. Use that as the barometer for all activities then. Yep. Okay. Outstanding. Well, Ken, where would you like to send people to get to know more about you and what you're doing at U-Haul? Well, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at CMO Sidekick. That's probably going to be the best bet. CMO Sidekick. Okay. Yep. And my listeners know that we will link that up in the show notes. We'll also include a link to your blog at U-Haul so that they can see the cool tips and hacking content <laughs> that you're providing uh, yep. uh, your your audience. That That's awesome. Well, Ken, thank you so much for sharing your story here today at U-Haul and uh, the cool things that you guys are doing. Uh, I really appreciate your time and uh, the story. Bernie, thank you. I appreciate it. Terrific. Well, I hope that you enjoyed my conversation with Ken Schneider, head of social media at U-Haul. And before we sign off, I do want to remind you that this episode is in cooperation with Visually, a leader in visual content development, just as their name says. We have published Social Business Journal Volume 7 with Visually titled Winning Through Niche Content Marketing. This journal is linked up at our show notes page for this episode, and it's also on our journals page, and you can find both of those at socialbusinessengine.com. If you are subscribed by email to get our weekly podcast updates that we send every Friday, then that journal has already hit your inbox. And if you're not subscribed and you'd like to be, then just visit our subscribe page at our website at socialbusinessengine.com. And if you are a regular listener to our podcast, thank you. I really appreciate you. If this is your first time listening to this podcast, well, thank you as well for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. 
And I hope that you'll push the subscribe button on your podcast player so that you get each of our weekly episodes on your player delivered auto-magically, as I like to say. And I would really be grateful if you would consider writing a review in iTunes so you can share your sentiments about the podcast, maybe tell us you know, what we can do differently, and just help other people discover our podcast. We've got a direct link to our podcast in iTunes at our website at socialbusinessengine.com slash iTunes. And lastly, I invite you to engage with me on Twitter. I'm at Bernie Borges. We're also on Twitter and Instagram with the same handle, which is at SBEngine. And we have a Facebook page appropriately named facebook.com slash social business engine. And our hashtag is SBE show. Well, that is going to do it for this episode. I want to thank my guest once again, Ken Schneider, social media manager at U-Haul. This is Bernie Borges of Find and Convert, wishing you continued success on your social business journey.